We recently visited some friends who told us they'd never seen a single firefly in their yard. Fireflies are struggling, but we can help by turning our gardens into firefly habitat. The number one priority for all fireflies is to make babies. So let's start there. Fireflies flash their lights to find each other in the darkness, but those little glowing butts, while very saucy, are also quite dim. This means their eyes are extremely sensitive to light, and even a little light spilling from our windows and roads can make it hard for them to find each other. Try stepping outside at night to see where the light's spilling into your garden. Closing blinds or adding blinds where you don't have them will make a big difference. And putting outdoor lights on motion sensors is also a huge help. Next, and this might seem obvious, we can't be spraying pesticides all over the place. That includes lawn treatments. Herbicides and fertilizers have some of the same ingredients as pesticides and can kill firefly larvae who live underground. In fact, the vast majority of a firefly's life is spent underground. So all that chemical use really takes a toll on firefly populations. If you do hire a lawn service, just save yourself a few bucks and ask them to cut the lawn but not to treat it. Your fireflies will thank you. And if you hire a mosquito service, those pesticides do not discriminate. They will kill your adult and baby fireflies. And bees, butterflies, and all kinds of other important and beneficial critters. This topic really deserves its own video, but for one alternative, try attracting more hummingbirds. A hummingbird's diet is about 80% insects, so a single hummingbird will eat hundreds of bugs a day. That includes mosquitoes, aphids, and gnats. So hummingbirds give a natural, and frankly adorable, alternative for pest control. Bats also love to eat mosquitoes. I was filming the moon for this video, but I did not expect to get all this bat footage. I'm pretty excited about it. Everything at night is so majestic and serene and- What is that? Is that a cat? Is that a werecat? Everything at night is so majestic and serene. You know, I'm just going to be really quiet for a minute. Just not to disturb all the nature. Anyway, I'm sure she's fine. And speaking of pest control, fireflies are actually beneficial predators. The best defense against garden pests is a balanced ecosystem, complete with beneficial predators. The friends I mentioned before who have no fireflies also mentioned having a bad grub problem. Well, turns out firefly larvae live underground for up to two years, and they are voracious predators, tracking down and eating grubs, slugs, snails, and other soft-bodied insects. And they even glow when they're underground. In this picture series, you can see a baby firefly eating a snail. Looks like it's getting sleepy. Oh wow, did it really fall asleep? No matter how many radioactive spiders I shake hands with, I can't seem to get my own butt to glow. I finally googled how fireflies are doing it, and it's complicated. Back to baby making. Another way to encourage more firefly reproduction is planting native pine trees. In developed areas, planting pines is thought to be one of the best ways to help save fireflies. They're the preferred environment for many species to mate and lay eggs, and mama fireflies love to nest underneath the trees. Firefly larvae even camouflage themselves to look like pine needles. Little geniuses. Don't have all that boom boom room for a full-size pine? There are quite a few smaller cultivars you can check out. Leaving down leaf litter in the fall also helps. They'll nest in there too. You could even use pine needle mulch in some of your gardens. It's a myth that it'll change the soil pH, so don't worry about hurting your plants. Firefly larvae also love decaying wood, so a wood pile or even a smaller stack of sticks and woody debris all helps give lightning bugs a place to raise young. Fireflies also love moisture, so adding a water feature will attract all kinds of wildlife, including lightning bugs. And it can be as simple as filling one of those little planter trays. If you have kids and run a sprinkler in the summers, you could even just shift the sprinkler toward a garden area where firefly larvae might be more likely to be hiding out. We're about to witness an encounter here between a male and a female, and I'm not sure if it's love or if we're about to witness a murder. You see, I have at least two different species of fireflies in my backyard. The first is Photinus pyralis, one of the most common backyard fireflies which are mostly out at dusk. And I've been seeing a second species, I think in the Photurus genus, higher up in my trees and later at night when it's dark. These Photurus females will actually imitate the Photinus flash pattern to lure in males and eat them. This lets them absorb toxins that the Photinus species makes, and it protects them from spiders and other predators. It's so hard to get my camera to focus with the darkness and all the layers of grass. What is happening? I can't tell what's going on. Well, that was either beautiful or horrifying. This love slash murder scene happened to take place in a patch of little blue stem grass. And reducing your lawn and adding in more gardens is a huge help for adding habitat. Really, any warm, humid environment will attract more fireflies, and they love taller grasses. So consider mowing your grass a little bit taller or less often, and even planting grasses like prairie drop seed or little blue stem. 
and for some firefly species, the adults will eat pollen and nectar. While our neighbors and roads are out of our control, we can try to landscape in a way that gives both habitat and cover from outside light pollution. This fall, we're planning to start planting up a berm at the edge of our front yard to give us some more privacy from the road. But while making this video, I realized it'll also help to protect our yard from intruding headlights. Synchronous fireflights, who actually sync up the flashing of their lights in their mating ritual, get knocked out of sync for several minutes after a car's headlights flash. So anything we can do to help shelter from the elements and light pollution will bring more fireflies to our yard. If you're interested in using your garden not just to create beauty, but also to create habitat, then you're in the right place. That's my thing. And I hope you'll consider subscribing. I love learning from you guys too. A few years back, we transformed a dry, sunny, dead patch of weeds to an oasis for fireflies and all kinds of other insects. To check that out, watch this video next. I'm catching Sasquatch on film right now. Very squatchy. Extra squatchy tonight.